Hello and welcome to Chesapeake Weekly. Well, we have a few service changes to bring to you this week, in large part due to some staffing shortages throughout the city. So first up, all new bulk waste and bagged yard waste collections are suspended until further notice. As we've said on here before, our waste management division is working with some severe staffing shortages right now. So this suspension will allow crews to get caught up on requests that have already been made while maintaining automated bin service and also while working to hire and train new staff. So please do not place anything new at the curb for the time being. If you'd like to, all Chesapeake residents can haul bulk items and other eligible waste to the SIPSA Greenbrier Transfer Station or to the SIPSA Regional Landfill in Suffolk. You can find hours and requirements for that at SIPSA.com. And we really do appreciate everyone's patience as our waste management division continues to work through those staffing shortages. Now, there are also some new hours of operation for the service desk at Development and Permits. So the Permit and Plan Review Service Desk on the second floor of City Hall will only be open on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. There will be no service on Tuesdays or Thursdays, but there will be a drop box available on the second floor for any documents that need to be delivered on those days. Now, this change is partially staffing related and also because many people are now using the convenient online permitting system called eBuild. So eBuild is a quick and easy process that allows you to submit your permits online anytime, any day. Um, if you need any help using this, you can get some help getting started at 382-6018 or just email permit support at cityofchesapeake.net. Now, with the rise in COVID cases, emergency rooms are seeing also a steep rise in patients. But do you know when it's appropriate to go to the ER? Well, our friends at Chesapeake Regional Healthcare have helped us out with a few tips on how to know when you need to go to the ER and when you should go elsewhere. So you should go to your primary care physician for things like checkups and physicals, flu shots and other vaccines, headaches and migraines, chronic medical conditions, those sort of things you should go to your primary care for. Now you should go to an urgent care facility for cold or flu-like symptoms, vomiting or diarrhea, sprains, strains, or small fractures, and simple cuts or lacerations. And finally, you should go straight to the ER if you have chest pain or difficulty breathing, a head or eye injury, fainting, dizziness or confusion, numbness in limbs or face, open wounds or bone fractures, or anaphylactic shock. Now, obviously, this is not a complete list of uh, things you might go to the ER for, but it kind of gives you an idea about the seriousness of what should be happening to you or a loved one if you were to go to the ER. And of course, for all serious, life-threatening emergencies, never hesitate to call 911. Now, one thing you certainly do not need to go to the ER for is COVID testing. And yes, lots of people are going to the ER for COVID testing. You shouldn't even go there for mild COVID-19 symptoms. If they're manageable, there's no need to go to the ER. So for testing, you can go to the Community Testing Center at Military Circle Mall in Norfolk. It's by appointment only and only PCR tests will be offered. So there's no rapid tests there. Learn more and book your appointment by visiting vase.vdh.virginia.gov slash testing appointments or by calling 877-VAX-IN-VA. Now, if you still need to get your vaccination or perhaps your booster shot, the Chesapeake Health Department can help with that. They are hosting vaccination clinics every Tuesday from 10 to 3 at their Dominion Commons site. So that's over there near the Walmart on Grassfield Parkway. Vaccinations are for those five years of age or older, and all minors have to be accompanied by an adult. No appointment is necessary. You can learn more at vdh.virginia.gov slash Chesapeake. Okay, now for some fun stuff. There was a Girl Scout takeover at the new fire station, sta Station 7, down on Battlefield Boulevard. One local troop traded cookies for some on-the-job experience from our local firefighters. And with that, the firefighters got a little bit of a break and, of course, a tasty snack. Take a look. It's turkey time! 10 minutes is my favorite. <laughs> what do you like about it? Uh, the mint. <laughs>
Oh my goodness! No, I'm a... What are these? Are these new? Yes. yes. This is why I'm so fat now. I can't even care about cookies. Uh, Alright, how about I just... How about you pick them for me? How about that? Oh yeah! All right. All right, hold on. Who wants my money? Me! What? Wait, wait, who's going with my money? Me! All right, we're here. Are you excited to sell Girl Scout cookies this year? Yes. How are you going to sell them? Get them to people and say, do you like these Girl Scout cookies? I think that's going to sell a lot of them. That sounds really good. What's your favorite part about being a Girl Scout? That we get to sell cookies. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year I have a goal of 4,000 cookies because um, I want to be top 10 in the council. How are you going to do that? Um, so I plan to walk a couple, like, a couple different neighborhoods and then definitely doing a lot of cookie booths. Do you know what you and your troop are going to do with your cookie funds? Um, we are going to definitely use it to go camping and we're gonna do community service with it. What do you like most about cookie season? Cookie season is probably, um, my favorite is I get to interact with people and I get to learn how to talk out to strangers. Oh, I appreciate it. Here, we take over this. Um, Chris, what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? The Thin Mints. Why are they your favorite? I just don't, I don't know. I just like the Thin Mints. Yeah, I like, I like mint chocolate chip, so they taste like mint chocolate chip. What do you think about being a firefighter? Do you think that'd be a cool job? Yes. Why? Because uh, I like washing cars. So the Adventure Foles, a new Girl Scout cookie for this year. Brownies, caramel, I mean, need I say more? It sounds delicious, right? So be sure that you support our local girls. You know, Girl Scout, the regional headquarters is based right here in Chesapeake. And all the sales from Girl Scout cookies stay right here locally, helping our Chesapeake girls. So make sure that you grab those cookie boxes when the girls come around the neighborhood or if you see them at the stores, which is gonna be happening in the next couple of months. And you can learn more about Girl Scouts at gsccc.org. Well, just because it's cold out does not mean you should be neglecting your gardens. Now is the time to put in the work so that you can have a fabulous garden come spring. And believe it or not, now's a great time for pruning. But there are limitations to what you can prune and how you should do it. So, of course, we went to the expert, Mike Andrewcheck with the Chesapeake uh, Virginia Cooperative Extension. This is the time of the year that you should be doing most of your pruning. Um, there are a few exceptions that you don't want to do at this time of the year, and that could be for um, different physiological reasons. Um, for fruit trees like apples and pears, they're subject to a bacterial disease in February, and so you don't want to open wounds that the disease can get in. That's called fire blight. Okay? So, and then there are other trees that bleed a lot, so we're all familiar with maple syrup and the sap starts to flow and if we prune them um, at this time of the year the sap stays running for over a week and that leaves entry for again more disease and stuff like that. So we want to avoid those kinds of trees. Um, but most things, your roses, your um, grasses, your perennials, uh, any of your trees and shrubs, you'd want to go ahead and prune them now before they start to grow. And if you're working outside in your yard, and you notice an unusual wet spot, maybe even some water bubbling up in the middle of your yard, would you know what to do? I mean, my first thought would be to panic, but don't panic, just know what it could be. It might be a break in your water pipe. Water pipes and all wastewater infrastructure in this city and throughout the country are very old. It's a very old system, and so breaks are bound to happen. Um, every once in a while. Now it can be messy, it can be expensive, so you definitely want to know what it is and what to do. So here's David Jurgens back when he shared some information with us. Uh, pipe breaks can happen anywhere and we talked to him back when a pipe burst right in front of City Hall. Take a look. It's a pretty typical water leak call where a customer sees water bubbling out of the ground, they call us, we send a crew out and say, mm, you're right, there's water bubbling out of the ground. They do what I call my emergency triage. Is it our line that's leaking or is it the customer's line? And that depends on where it is with relation to the meter. 
our side of the meter, it's our problem. Customer side of the meter, it's a customer's issue. In this case, it was our, our water leak. They then, the next step is to call, is to call um, Miss Utility. Miss Utility calls all the utilities so that they can locate whether there's a gas line, electric line, cox, et cetera, so that we don't risk hitting anybody else's utility and causing additional problems for the customer. After Miss Utility comes, which is generally a three hour response time, then we dug it up, dug the pipe up, saw what type of problem it was. It was a blown tapping saddle in this case. They fixed it. They shut the water line down for that length of pipe in order so they can work on it so it's not done and water blowing out all the time. Then they fixed the repair, turned the water back on, flushed the line to make sure everything's safe, and then got water back to the customer. And expect a mess because we can't make the perfect cleanup right away because everything is completely soaking wet and saturated. It's gonna settle a little bit. We can't compact it because it's soaking wet. And so we'll come back in a few weeks and clean up the mess. And before we go, here's a quick environmental tip from our friends at the Chesapeake Environmental Improvement Council. Hi, I'm Dave Sackett with the Chesapeake Environmental Improvement Council with your January environmental tip. Make new habits. Reduce your environmental footprint by producing...